Content creation can be simple, but it isn't always easy. Trust me, I know. And that's why today in this video, we're going to be talking about eight mistakes to avoid as a content creator. Honestly, if I would have known these mistakes earlier, I could have avoided content fatigue, burnout, and comparison. So let's not wait any longer. Let's just go ahead and hop in. Mistake number one is failing to plan. There's a saying that it's like, failing to plan is planning to fail. And when it comes to the content creation that we do and the level that we like to pump it out, we do have to plan in advance and we have to have an overall system because it's not just me, it's me and my team working on my content. And so if I'm not organizing our content, it just becomes kind of a mess. But then just as a solo content creator, even when I did not have a video editor and I did not have an assistant and all these other things, like I had to stay even more organized in my opinion, because I had to make sure I was like, certain things were being filmed, certain things were being edited, certain videos were being pushed out when they needed to be. And especially if it's all on you, you like, I don't like to retain a whole bunch of information in my head when I can just write it down and like not have to hold real estate in my brain for that information. So definitely just be sure you go ahead and plan 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 and batch your content if you can so plan batch do your research i like to do these in different chunks as well and i actually have a video coming up about my entire youtube workflow overall so if you want to see that be sure you check it out in the link down below in the description and i'll put it up above in the cards for you too mistake number two is creating content that no one really asked for and the reason why is and i see this so many times in brand new creators and sometimes like more experienced creators who have been doing it but just have not gotten this one thing down people are looking for answers to their problems and the reason why i absolutely love youtube is because it is a search engine platform that is literally what it is for is people type in youtube questions or problems that they're having and videos will pop up to fix that you are, your video is a solution to somebody's problem so if you are not making content to be on the other side of that person's problem and vlogs can be that too by the way it's just go with me for a second if you're not doing that then you will see that your content is not going to be getting views it's not going to be getting seen because nobody asked for that content okay and so how you do this is like go on the youtube search bar type in so like if you have a video idea or if you have a question that you know people are wondering type that in and see what pops up as you are typing those different things that are populating are things that people want to see online also go into your competitors don't really believe in competitors but go into content creators like channels that have a similar niche as you and would have a similar audience and look at what videos are hitting for them first and foremost then go through their comment section see like what the people are asking like hey can you make a video on this i would love to see a video on this topic hey or like if they're asking questions in those comment sections take those same questions and now make a video from their questions so if you do not have a huge audience right now that's okay but you can leverage other people's audiences to be able to get there and let me just make sure I say this, this does not include obviously copying someone's material or content. What I personally recommend is for you not to even watch their video. I recommend for you just look at the comment section and look at the views on the video and see if people are, see if people are like really like receptive to that video. Okay. So number three is this is kind of like 2.5 to be honest, because it goes along with it. But like I said, like be sure you are making content that is answering people's questions. And again, to do this, go to answer the public, go on the YouTube search, um, search bar, go on the Google search bar. Again, like look through places where people are asking questions, like real life questions help on Reddit. I think Quora is another one you can look at, but like really dive deep into like answering your target audience's main questions. Whenever you are first starting, this is how you grow the fastest. Okay. People like you're amazing. I know you are amazing. We all know you're amazing, but <laughs> we may not want to see a day in the life video with you because we don't know what you can really offer us at this point, right? We don't know the value that you're going to provide in that day of life video because we haven't seen your other content. So if you want to place your videos in a way that they will be found and found quickly and easily, then the best way again to do that is to position your video as the answer to somebody's question as they're looking it up online. Okay. So again, answer the public is a great website to go to Reddit, Quora, other people's comment sections, other people's community channel walls, other people's like video ideas to see which ones are most popular. You can make your own like rendition of that video with your own perspective. Again, I don't recommend that you watch that video. So that's number three. Number four. Okay. Number four is something that 
like I've struggled with like for a while. This is not something I can, I'm just telling you because it's just like up in the air. Like I've struggled with this and which is why this is like an extremely important point for me. It is to be sure you are taking creative brain breaks. Okay. The mistake is to not take those brain breaks. And the reason why I say that is because it is so easy to want to keep pumping stuff out, keep doing all these things and feel like you have to keep hustling and grinding. But like our creativity and like our like content planning and our content creation processes that needs a break to kind of like rejudge and revitalize. Like, so schedule time in at the very beginning of the year, schedule time in for the rest of the year when you're going to take these creative brain breaks, because they do make a huge difference. Okay. Where you take like two weeks off of content creation, or you take a month off of content creation and you let your audience even know beforehand. And in the midst of that, Hey, y'all go back and watch these other videos. Here's some other videos I have for you or hop on live, whatever, like, but just take time away though. We love what we do. We love creating content. Like we both know that we have to sometimes take break, take breaks from the things that we love so dearly so we can continue to love them overall. Mistake number five is overthinking and over evaluating your content. And the reason why I say this is I truly stand by the fact that done is better than perfect, especially when it comes to content creation. We can think it through all day. We can try to figure out the best way to do it. The perfect content. No such thing as this. There's somebody who will hate your content and somebody who will absolutely love it in the exact same, in the exact same breath in the exact same way that you did it. Remember, here's the thing to remember. You can be the juiciest, most plumpest, most delicious peach but there are still going to be people in the world that do not like peaches. Okay. So when it comes to your content, focus on your target audience, focus on providing them the value and the content that, th that they want and that they've been asking you for. And don't worry about overthinking it, making it perfect, making sure it has to be filmed like this or have this, whatever. Don't worry about that. Okay. Like what I love to be able to be filming in an office space that like kind of gives me more of like my office space vibe. Yes. But do I have an office space right now? No. And so I use what I have and I use what I got to then be able to get what I want in the future. Don't overthink your content. If your background is not what you want it to be, use what you have until you can get what you want overall. Mistake number six is thinking that I need all of this, this equipment in order to succeed on YouTube, in order to succeed as a content creator in general. And that is just so not true. And that is a definitely a mistake. Oh my God, that I made at the beginning, I got all this different stuff and then realized I didn't even need it. So it was kind of really just like wasted money. And so use again, use what you have right now. What literally what I'm using to film right now is my Canon and 50, the Canon and 50 with my lavalier mic. Okay. And a big natural light window in front of me and that's it. Okay. You don't need all of this equipment. Now will equipment eventually like help and like help to slowly improve your channel? Yes, it will. But do you need it in the very beginning to start out? No. And don't let like that thought keep you from creating content in general. So number seven is it hits, it hits in my heart real hard because we want to be sure that we are not making the mistake of creating content that we don't even like, that we don't even align with overall, that we don't even enjoy creating. Okay. So as you are creating content, like really like take a look at it and be like, is this, if my channel blew up and YouTube stuck me in a certain section, like in a certain category, would I want to be here? Would I want to continue to create content within this space? And if the answer is no, then you may need to look at and realign either your business model, realign your content strategy, realign a lot of things. All right. Because we want to be sure we are making content that again, aligns with us that we want to create and that like we relate like to our target audience with overall very, very important. Like this thing is not, it's not easy, but it should be enjoyable because those moments are going to be the things that push you through when it does get hard. If you don't even like what you're doing, it's going to be way easier to get up, give up as you're going. So, make content that you, you actually like, but then of course that your audience is asking for. So number eight, the last mistake in this video that content creators can make is not being authentically yourself on camera. And I know that is hard. Like again, I'm sitting here in front of a camera. I'm not sitting here in front of a crowd of people talking to you. I'm sitting in front of a camera with nobody in the room with me. And I'm talking to the camera knowing that this, this footage is going to get to you. Okay. 
And I say all this to say is because it is weird, it is awkward, but showing up authentically as yourself on camera will bring your actual people to you. The last thing that you want is to imitate like an influencer that you follow or an entrepreneur that you follow or someone that you love that is like in a public space and you start pretty much taking their brand upon yourself and you're now pushing their brand rather, rather than being uniquely you and building out your own brand. And I know this is hard, which is why in our coaching program, we have a whole section about how to identify your unique you factor and how to use that within your content. All that to say, be sure that you are showing up as yourself. There's nothing wrong with watching other people. There's nothing wrong with liking certain things and taking certain things um, from other people's content as inspiration, but I want you to show up fully as yourself. And this is going to happen over time. This is going to cause you to get vulnerable. This does not mean this is going to happen on the very first video that you create, or even the 12th or the 50th video that you create. It may take time for you to become uniquely yourself and authentically yourself on camera, but I'm telling you, that's what is going to attract people to you and to your channel. So those are the top eight mistakes that I've seen personally <laughs> within my content creation journey that I've also seen amongst several other content creators, especially the ones who have joined our infinite audience program. So speaking of the infinite audience program, if you are interested in joining us in that program and learning how to really leverage the power of video content over organic video content or organic marketing strategies within your business, and you want to be able to show up online as the expert that you are, and you want your target audience and you want your clients and your ideal clients and your ideal customers to see that and to know that and to want Want to work with you and to want to buy your products and just you want to build your overall community online and that overall base online then i want you to come check out the free private training that i have for you that will then show you all what it looks like to join the infinite audience program and what it looks like to work with us but then it also teaches you not only how to work with us and what it looks like but also like how to build that profitable business using the power of youtube and organic video content so if that's something that you're interested in come and check it out it is a free private training training for you. It is, it is not always going to be available. So if you want to come check it out, I definitely encourage you to do so soon. And so, yeah, you do that at andrewdenise.com slash infinite, and you'll go ahead and click the little button and you'll go ahead and enroll for the private training from there. So if this video was helpful, I will see you in the private training. And then I will also see you in the next video. I love you so much. I love you to the moon and back. And remember, I am always and will always be rooting for you. See y'all next time. Bye.